but uh, can anybody identify this handsome young creature? Oh, you're good. You're very wow, good. Wow! And not only that, she pulled it out of like the rear memory bank. I could tell she's like, it's the rock. That was good. Nice recall. Well, well, it was funny because I was telling my mum this is yeah. animal because one of the other people was saying how a, uh, an elephant was or something was um, related to it. And I said that there was this animal that's related to it. Is it in the sea? Scientist taxonomist these days. Let me just identify first. She said it's a rock hyrax. Has anyone heard of a hyrax before? If you haven't, don't feel bad. Um, rock hyrax, African species found in portions of the Middle East. And what she's bringing up is that the fact that this animal has a is, is a very unique species for a number of reasons. But I think one of the most outstanding facts presented as a fact right now, but I'll tell you that it's more of a theory than anything else right now by taxonomists. So whenever I throw the word theory out there, get your rotten tomato shooters ready because you don't have to like any theory. We try to present the theories that are supported by the best scientific evidence these days. And what I will tell you is taxonomists, those that group animals into these Latin names, right? The double Latin name, binomial nomenclature. It's a really nice way of really describing what the animal is in a different language. Um, to make a long story short, if you look at the taxonomy of this species, Current day taxonomists will look not just at the size of the animal, not just at where it's from, not just at its overall physical behavior or its physical makeup, but they look at a lot of different things in the animal to decide who its closest relative is. We know this is an African species that is a primitive hoofed animal. This is a hoofed animal. Can we run across? Yeah, the folks, does anyone, does anyone object to having a hyrax run across your lap? No. Okay, here's the only rule. The rule is this, legs together, and you gotta sit on your hands. You gotta promise me you're not going to put your hands around and try to hug the hyrax, okay? Uh, he's, you know, comfortable on people's laps and we set it up the same way every time, which is why he's so cozy doing this. Pay attention to how sure-footed he is. Pay attention to uh, his balance. Most animals with tremendous balance have very, very long tails attached to their bodies as well as far as a counterbalance system goes, but no tail. And look how agile this little creature is at moving. The name Rock Hyrax would suggest, obviously, that they spend most of their time in rock outcroppings. I'd like to point out the surrounding hillsides here. This is a very similar habitat to what we find in, uh, in Sub-Saharan Africa, where Hyrax is from. Back to the relationship thing. The most widely accepted theory by scientists and behaviorists these days, taxonomists alike, is that you are looking at one of the closest living relatives to the elephant. Now, pe people look at me, okay, where's the trunk? He weighs like a couple of pounds. Uh, I don't see tusks. What's the deal with the elephant comparison? And I get the reservation on it when you first hear it, but let me supply you with the evidence now and why this theory was created. Number one, this is a primitive hoofed animal. This is not a rodent. Okay, rodents. They have a short gestation period, right? 30 days for like a mouse or a rat to produce, you know, um, their offspring. An elephant, two years of gestation inside the body that animal's developing in, in, uh, as a uh, placental mammal, right? Six months of gestation in this little animal. Very long gestation period. Now, if you remove the size out of the equation. Because remember, there are animals that at one point did exist much larger than they exist today. And if you figure in environmental pressures of a species, as a big species, maybe the smaller members of the species are more uh, proficient at supplying for food for whatever reason, for an extended period of time. Those individuals that are smaller have a greater chance of breeding and producing small offspring. And then this, you know, the selection process takes here, here. over and we end up getting smaller oh, members of the species. It's so cute. To get to the nitty gritty of it, Hyrax fossils has been found that existed at one point that were darn close to the size of rhinos.